pink hat. Oh, that's not a hat. That's my brain. Oh. Ah! Ladies, gentlemen, and adventurers of all ages, it's time to dive back into something that I really love doing. Baldur's Gate 3 is an incredible game, and it would be an accurate statement to say that the amount of actual content in this game is insane. Sure, it borrows from an already established resource in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but the way that they expanded on it, altered it, and really made it feel like its own proper thing while still having those particularly strong bones. That said, you could sort of argue because of that that Baldur's Gate 3 is just a really high effort, high budget mod of Dungeons & Dragons or at least that's something that I'm willing to say for the sake of this intro, because today we're going to talk about even more mods people made for Baldur's Gate 3. Whether you just want to mess around and have some fun with them, or maybe you're looking down the line at your next playthrough of the game and want to see if there's anything you'd actually want around for your entire playthrough. There are tons of genuinely incredible options out there when it comes to mods, and so once again today we'll be going over another 10 insanely good mods for Baldur's Gate 3. Without further ado then, let's start off with the Blood Hunter class mod by Wolf. Fitting name for this, honestly, this is an introduction and adaptation of the relatively recently created Blood Hunter class, which was made by Matthew Mercer of Critical Role fame for custom use, but it has now found its way into a lot of home games, as all the info was of course publicly released. Now you can have this full-on class in the game with both of its subclass options, my personal favorite being the one where you can turn yourself into what is basically a werewolf and just fight as a werewolf, and then you can also light your own claws on fire so they do bonus damage. It's just freaking cool. I mean, how badass is that? As a whole class then, this is sort of somewhere between fighter, sorcerer, and druid, so it's definitely got a unique flavor to it that won't go amiss if you want to try something new, and it's been perfectly implemented here. Second up then we have something just absolutely beautiful, the Elder Brain Head Mod by Suma Jin. Look, I like silly things, we all know that at this point, and if you like silly things too, you may be interested in this mod which gives you the option in character creation to literally just replace your head with an elder brain. It's really that simple, and who wouldn't want to look like this? Jokes aside, it's actually a really cool mod, giving a new head option that just replaces your head with a suspended elder brain. It looks funky as hell, and hey, it's October now, so why not have your October playthrough symbolized by some silly, gory, brain on the outside type of playthrough? It interacts with hair pretty reasonably as well, though beer do sort of hang from thin air if you pick the wrong one, so do be careful with your facial hair, but all in all, I love this concept, it looks amazing, it's hilarious, it's just great. Third today is going to be Feats Expanded by Ryson. This does exactly what it says on the tin, and adds a whole whack of extra feats to the game, specifically ones that are in D&D 5e but didn't make it into Baldur's Gate 3. This can let you customize yourself in even more interesting ways as you progress, with new options like the ability to push enemies you hit with melee attacks, bonus critical hit damage with specific damage types if you choose the one that matches what you're using, or even telekinetic, which lets you push and pull enemies around the battlefield at will. Very fun, quite expansive, and this has no negatives on a playthrough, of course, as if you decide you don't want to use it after all, you can just not pick the feats, no problem. Fourth up is Ultimate Transmog by Waden, and this is something that I've wanted in the game for ages, and I'm sure the vast majority of players will probably agree. Fashion is of course one of the most important parts of a video game. It defines how you feel about your character in any given moment, really, and the way that the game works as a base, you look exactly like the equipment that you put on. Sometimes we'll want to put on armor that doesn't necessarily look that good but has great stats or effects, or maybe it just doesn't quite match with the rest of the outfit that you're wearing. Well, that's where this mod comes in. This adds in a special item to the game, you can use it to combine the appearance extractor with a piece of equipment to extract its appearance, very literally, creating a new item that is purely visual. You then combine the visual item with the piece of equipment that you want to look like it, and voila! It changes the visuals and the name of that piece of equipment to match the appearance that you attracted before, but keeps the stats and effects of the item that you applied it to. This is just a function that I've always wanted to be in this game, and it is executed so effectively and in a way that makes it very easy to use, so I'm a big fan of this one. Fifth then, we have Infinite Weapons Ranged by Pablo Garmada. This is a really cool use of messing around with custom items and creating custom spells using assets and concepts that are already in the game. Essentially the idea is to create a suite of particularly cool and powerful ranged weapons, which considering in the base game we only have one legendary ranged weapon weapon is, yeah, definitely appreciated. That said, some of them do take some inspiration from that one weapon, but most of them are pretty well defined as being their own entirely unique thing. The idea behind these is that they will also scale with your level, so that you can use them from level 1 all the way up to level 12, and they will increase in power as you do, with the different options within the mod having different effects as well, different unique weapon actions, and different spells that they give you access to too. Generally speaking, the concept is really cool, it's very well executed, and my favorite is definitely the little hand crossbow with scorching 
a shot, which just makes it rapid fire like crazy. It just feels really cool to use. Six today is Teleport Party to You by Fallen Star, and this one does exactly what you think it would. It's really simple. After you install this mod, you get a spell added onto your characters, all of them called Teleport Party to You. And what does this do, you may be asking? Well, it just teleports your entire party to the character that used the spell. Without the context of how the game works, that may seem a little bit unnecessary, but those of us with dozens if not hundreds of hours at this point will be pretty well aware that there are some places, some interactions, some areas, some zones that just make it really irritating to try and move your entire group in one go. Things like patches of poison, even the shadow curse lands cause problems, the buttons in Ramazith Tower as well, all of those types of mechanics around the game that just make you sit there and manage all four of your character's movements one at a time, and it's just agonizing to do. It may not come up all that often, but what it does, it sucks. And if you have this mod, it doesn't suck anymore, and that sells it for me instantly. Seventh, then we have another beautiful new class coming into the game. This one not even from fifth edition of D&D, but from, well, World of Warcraft. Say hello to the Death Knight. And as someone who played World of Warcraft years ago, but was quite heavily invested at the time, this is an extremely solid recreation of the concept of that class being brought into Baldur's Gate 3. You have your runes and your runic power as your baseline function mechanics, being resources that you have to juggle to use your strongest abilities. And while messing around with this, I went blood as a subclass to actually check out. There is also Frost and Unholy, of course, but I thought blood would be the most interesting one to see how it was implemented, and well, it's just, it's awesome. Death Strike heals for a portion of the damage that you received in the last turn. You can overheal and get temporary hit points like crazy. You can sort of taunt the enemies nearby to actually make you feel like a tank. You can pull a single enemy over to you or even use classic Gorefiend's Grasp, which is an area of effect pull. They just put so much genuine effort and love into this to making it work and function and be at least somewhat balanced. And it turned out incredibly. Sure, it may not be perfectly balanced with the way that Baldur's Gate 3 works, but it is entirely different than any other class you've played in the game. I can guarantee that much for sure, and it's quite a lot of fun to mess around with too. Then we have number eight, which is Camp Event Notifications by Gvalier, which I probably pronounced wrong, but this is another one of those simple but incredibly useful mods that just brings in some much appreciated quality of life to a specific aspect of the game. One of the mechanics going on just always in the background is as time progresses in your story, as you complete certain quests or objectives, go to specific places, events will pop up in your camp. Certain conversations or encounters will happen when you have a long rest, but the game doesn't tell you when this is. And so if you are going for a longer play session, maybe you don't have a very rest reliant group. You don't need to rest to actually be able to keep going. So you can just play for ages without doing so. You could easily miss out on some of these camp events as a result, or even just delay them until they aren't the most relevant anymore. So this simply will occasionally stick an exclamation mark above your head so that you're aware that you should go just have a long rest to progress whatever story event is about to take place. Never miss anything again and always do it at the right time. A simple fix, but a pretty effective one. For number nine, then, we have one final quality of life change and over-explained interaction options by Christmas 214. And this one, some people will love and some people will think it's a little bit cheaty, but it's up to how you want to play. So I thought I would share it because, well, it's definitely effective. And what this actually is then is simply expanded text when taking part in conversations that will show you the effect it will have on your companions. Feeling socially inept, but you still want to be friends with Asterion? This will tell you how he feels about every single word that you're about to say without needing to do any save resets ever. Whether you want this or not is up to you, of course, but it is absolutely incredible for those who do. Then finally today, let's talk about a nice set of just dice. I like to do these once per episode or so just to not overload you with too many different dice to use. And today we have Peculiar Dices Pack by Dimitikiro, which I uh, definitely have pronounced wrong. This is quite simply a pretty massive pack of different aesthetic dice options. You can equip whichever one that you want, but there are lots to choose from. Some of them a little bit higher quality than the others, but it definitely lives up to the name as there are a number of dice with a sort of dragon weaved around the edges that looks really cool and even a really funky steampunk die that is just an incredibly strange shape, but looks really cool to see in action. And that'll just about do it for today then everyone. I hope you've enjoyed all of this showcase of just another 10 wonderful mods for Baldur's Gate 3. Go check them out yourself, of course, if you want to use them in your own game. And I hope that you enjoy yourself if you do so. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye